right there, just lift your hands up to the God that you say you will always worship. I can't give you the words to say to your God, but lift up a worship to your God, the one who gives you life, the one who gives you breath. It's in him that we live and we move and we have our being. It is him who woke us up this morning. It is him that allows us to stand here and even offer him worship. So I will open up our mouth and we will give him glory and we will give it to him because he deserves it. As long as I, I'm breathing, I'm breathing, we're breathing, you're breathing. So worship him, so worship him. As long as, Worship you.
Come on, open up your mouths. Come on, we sang about it, but let's do it. Come on, we open up our mouths. And let's just give him glory just for a few minutes. Let's just magnify him just for a few moments. Let's just give him glory just for a few moments. Let's just forget about ourselves just for a few moments. Let us concentrate on him just for a few moments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you in. We welcome you in. Father, you're welcome here. Father, you're welcome here. Come and sit with us. Come and suck with us. Come and correct us. Come and change us. Come and change us. Come and move us out of the way so that you can get the glory. Move us out of the way so you can get the honor. We give you the glory.
I wake up in the morning, he's all that I need. Even when I go to bed at night, he's all that. When, when, when I need him, he's right there. When I need him, he's right, right there. He is a mind regulator and a heart fixer. All that you are, all that you are. Jesus, Jesus, you are. Jesus is his name. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mary's little baby. Jesus. He's a lily of the valley. Jesus. He's a lily of the valley. Jesus. He's a bright and morning star, Jesus, Jehovah, Shira, Jehovah, Nisi, Jehovah, Rapha, Jesus, Jesus, everything that I've ever needed. Jesus. I love the name of Jesus. I really love the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow at that name. And even every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus you are. Trouble waters. He's my way in and my way out. He's my way in and my way out. 
Give him praise, everybody. Hallelujah. 
conference. And this morning, I want to challenge you just a little differently. Most of the time when we raise the offering, we understand that it's a part of our worship service. And when you give, that is the closest to representing who God is that you can get because he gave his only begotten son. And that was the greatest gift. He gave it to us that don't deserve it, which is all of us. But he loved us enough to say that if you need to be saved, if you need to be healed, delivered, I have the only gift that will only do what I needed to be done, and that is my only son. For some of us this morning, I want to challenge you. For some, it'll be not equal giving, but equal sacrifice. Let me tell you what I mean by that. For some of us, to give $100, it's just a drop in the bucket. But for then, for others of us, it's the whole bucket. But the Bible said God loves a cheerful giver. In 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, it says, Every man according as he purposed in his heart. Before you left this morning, some of you have already purposed what you wanted to give. But I, I want to challenge you to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you this morning because he may have changed everything. He may have seen what is coming on this week, what's coming next month. And he know you need to put something in so you can draw something out. Amen. But he says, give, not grudgingly. Don't give because oh, I wish they go ahead and move on with the service. No, you're going to miss your blessing. Give because he said, don't give grudgingly or of necessity. Don't give because you just want something in return. Give because it's just right to do it. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So this morning, we have several ways that you can give. Thank God for our first lady. Amen. There is none like this. <laughs> I was trying to wait until I finished the offering, but you know, I'm so, I'm so excited about how God has used you for such a time as this. As we are purposing in our heart what we're going to give, some of you, I'm not telling you what to give. Please understand that. I'm not telling you what to give, but sometimes it's just good to be reminded how, God, how good God has been to you and to give some of what God has blessed you with. Amen? So for all the women, if you would, and if you can, and if you are willing, let $20 be your base on this morning. How about that? Can we just start just that? That's just the base. Now, you can go all the way up to 50 to 100, 1,000 if you like, however the Spirit of the Lord leads you. But if you want to give this morning, we have three ways that you can give. You can text to give to 813 333-1014. Let me say it again. 813-333-1014. And we want to thank God this morning for all of our live streamers. Can we just clap our hands for our invisible audience on this morning? Amen. We're getting ready to give. You can also give by Give the Vine. Look for Light Point Church. And uh, Pastor, if you don't mind, if you stand up for a minute. Look for this face right here. Turn around. Look for this face right here. Oh, give the fight. This is our, our wonderful pastor. Amen. So you don't get, get it wrong with the wrong light point. Amen. So we thank God. We have our ushers on the floor. Some of you may be old school and want to write checks like me. Or just give something tangible, something soft. We thank God for the change. But we also want you to give something soft. Amen. It goes a little bit further. And it's easier. But you can text to give at this time. We're so grateful because the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto who? To you. Hi. And then he told you how you was going to receive it. He said, good measure, press down, shake it together, and then what? Run it over. How many want to run it over? Blessing this morning. Then give with the spirit of expectancy. I love you with the love of the Lord. Let us pray over our offering this morning. Kind Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you for all that you have done and for what you're going to do. 
bless those that had to give and didn't have to give, but had a spirit of giving. We ask that you will multiply the seed in the name of Jesus. I ask if you will multiply the seed in the name of Jesus and let it be for whatever the kingdom needs in Jesus' name. Amen. You're back in the hands of our lovely presider. Let's receive her at this time, Dr. Jamika. show up on the scale. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to have the privilege of introducing our speaker at this time. Amen. Pastor Siobhan Smith, a native of Norfolk, Virginia, is a mighty woman of God. Amen. Who demonstrates God's love to others throughout the country. Her love for God and her commitment to serving and helping others is evident through her lifestyle of service. Her walk is evident in her obedience and willingness to trust God in all things. Her full-time mission is to ignite a renewed passion for God in the hearts of men and women everywhere. Pastor, Pastor Smith holds a Bachelor of Science degree in music education from Norfolk State University. Professionally, she has impacted the lives of children as a teacher in the state of Virginia in the Norfolk and Newport News public school system. Above all her accomplishments, she considers raising godly children her primary purpose. As a mother, she firmly believes that the best way to raise successful children is to actively model what it means to walk in love and integrity. Sought after nationally to minister God's word in conferences and retreats, she has also authored eight powerful books. You are the prize, amen. Empowering Moments, 21 Day Devotional, Empowering Moments, Volume 2, 30 Day Devotional, My Journey in Obedience Journal, Consecration with Siobhan Smith, a 15 day guide of prayer and devotion, and her Amazon number one bestseller, What the Church Didn't Tell Us, Wives Edition, When Obeying God Makes You Look Stupid and You Are the Prize, Singles Edition, amen. In addition to being an author, Pastor Smith started her musical journey with her single, Supreme God, and produced recordings of prayers for intercession, volumes one and two, and Life After Divorce DVD to help others deal with traumatic experiences. Pastor Smith walks boldly in her anointing and in her calling, and is featured as a cast member on Bishop T.D. Jake's The Gospel Season 2, The Best Preacher You Never Heard. We get ready to hear today, y'all. Amen. Here she shares her journey as a woman in ministry and humbling herself to do the will of the Lord. In 2012, Pastor Smith founded Siobhan Sellers Ministries, now Siobhan Smith Ministries, whose vision is to spread the love of God, ignite the passion of God in others throughout the kingdom, and assist others in carrying out their God-given assignments and fulfilled purpose. The mission of Siobhan Smith Ministries is to provide services such as vision casting development, leadership development, church planting, ministry coaching, and mentorship. A subsidiary of Siobhan Smith Ministries, Pastor Smith has also launched the Siobhan Smith Partnership Program as well as Empowering Moments, Mentorship for Men and Women. A woman of many accomplishments and esteemed value, in 2022, she fully embraced her calling as a prophet of the Lord and is dedicated to making known the word of God and calling others back to obedience to God. Pastor Smith is now fully committed to traveling to spread the gospel and reaching and empowering others through Siobhan Smith Ministries. 
Now, come on, let's give God a praise for the woman of God. We're going to hear a selection, amen, from our praise team to bring us into a place where our hearts are ready to receive. And after them, we will hear the voice of our speaker of the hour, Pastor Siobhan Smith. Come on, let's give God a praise for her. Praise the Lord. I woke up with this song on my, in my mind. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing of his word. It sounds just like music in my ear. It's the sweetest name on earth, and it's all oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. wonderful name I call you master savior Jesus like a fragrance after the rain it's Jesus Jesus Jesus
Worship to the Father. I want you to begin to lift up worship to the Father. I want you all to begin to, oh, come on. There's a sound that the Father is waiting to hear from this house, from these people. I need you all to go and worship with me. There's a sound that the Father is waiting to hear from this house, from these people. Because whether you know it or not, you are right in the middle of the Father getting ready to shift you where you're supposed to be. Let me tell you this. The Father never sends me to a place unless the people or the leaders or the region is in the middle of a major transition. He only sends me to a people that's ready to to move and they need to get a push and they need to get confirmation. They need to receive a revelation of what they believe the Father has given them to do. And so that's why I'm here on today. I'm here by divine appointment from the Father because you are in the middle of one of the greatest transitions of your life and you cannot make any missteps. You can't make any moves in your flesh. You can't make any moves dictated by your feelings because our feelings will lie to us. And so in this season, every move that we make must be God moves. They must be God-ordained moves. Every relationship that we have must be God-ordained. Every agreement we come into, it must be a God agreement. Every job that we accept, it must be a God's job. Not just a good job, but the job that God wants for us. And so you can't afford to miss it, not in this season. Declare with me today, no more misses. No more misses. No more missed seasons. No more missed opportunities. No more, no more, no more, no more. I'm going to get everything that the Father has for me. And the only way I'm not going to miss is I got to stay in the presence of God because that's where he gives instruction. That's where he releases download. That's where he gives revelation. That's where he gives strategy. I need you right now to lift your heads and begin to release worship in this house. Because the Father wants to give instructions to this house. He wants to give strategy to every person that's been commissioned to be here on today. You may not be a member. 
But I promise you, God drew you to life point today. So I need you now to begin to release worship as you're in here. I want you now to begin to love on the Lord. Come on, you begin to tell him, God, you're my all. You're my everything. Come on, God, I love you more than anything. You're the reason why I live. You're the reason why I breathe. Yeah, I took some hits, but I'm still alive. Yeah, some things took the wind out of me, but I'm still here. I thank you for being the reason why I live. I honor your great name. You're sovereign, and you do what you want to do. I don't always understand why you do what you do, but God, I trust you with my present and with my future. I trust you with my marriage. I trust you with my, y'all ain't saying nothing with my children. I trust you with what's going on in my body. Can you all lift your hands high? I'm gonna need some more. Can you all lift your hands high? And now, come on. Open up your mouth. Come on. Come on, lift the worship in this house. Lift the worship in this house. Lift the worship in this house. For thine, is the kingdom. Come on, lift it. And the power. Hi, yeah, yeah. And the glory. Hey, yeah. For thine, come on. Okay, Rabba Sandele Bokota is the kingdom and the power. God, you deserve all glory. And the glory. Hey, for thine is the Kingdom and the power echo and the glory. Come, come on. You have poured out of your soul. And despite what you're dealing with personally, you have made a decision to give God your everything. And the Father told me to tell you while you were up here worshiping that while you were up here leading the people of God into his presence, while you were up here getting people uh, to a place where they can receive a breakthrough, where they can receive healing from the Father, God says to tell you that he's going back and he's going to deal with some things in your house. God says to tell you that when you go back home, you're going to know that I've turned some things around for you. There's some apologies that needs to be released to you. And the Father says to tell you that he's convicting that person. <laughs> I don't know. But I just heard the Lord say, tell you that he's dealing with his heart right now. He's dealing with his heart right now. And he's getting ready to cause all things to line up the way he intended from the beginning. He said, now you have fought long enough. He said, you can put your weapons up, baby. He said, because I, the Lord, am the one that will vindicate you. Your worship has gotten my attention. Your press has gotten my attention. Your resilience, the Father says, has gotten my attention. And now I, the Lord, am going now, and I am going to cause all things to line up according to what I will for your life from the beginning. You will no longer cry about that same situation any longer because I am dealing with the heart of man. And they will come and they will make it right, saith the Father. They will make it right. And I lift now off of you this burden and this deep pain that you've been carrying. I lift it off of you even now. I lift it off of you even now. And you will no longer be limited and delegated to one place and to one region. Because the Father says what rests on your life is supposed to go all over the world. 
And everybody that's attached to you is going to have to understand that you can no longer, oh, be boxed in. You can no longer be limited. The Father is saying that this is your year of breakout. This is your year to break forth. This is your year, saith the Lord, where the nation will know who you are. There is a weight that I've placed on your voice that when you open your mouth, true deliverance takes place. And you will not allow the pain that you've experienced to muzzle your spirit. The Father frees you. The Father heals you. The Father mends you. The Father puts you back together again. The Father restores you. Okay. Oh, and he lets you know that he affirms you. And he's endorsed you. And he's sanctioned you. And he's the one that sends you. You go where I send you, saith the Lord. I have dealt with the heart of man and I will cause them to make it right because this is what you've been carrying and now you can be free to go and do what the Father has given you to do for you are not just a minstrel but you are the prophet of the Lord you are God's voice and you will preach this gospel and you will declare what thus saith the Lord with power and with authority as you travel I see you preaching this gospel I see you singing the songs of the Lord and I see major breakthrough taking place wherever you step your foot at this is the word of the Lord, and it will be done in Jesus' name. Can we worship the Lord? Can we worship the Lord? Can we worship the Lord? So in order for the Father to move and flow like he desires to, we're going to have to be able to set the right atmosphere in the house, right? So we, we, we got to know what happens when we really release ourselves in worship. Okay, so worshiping is really pouring out of yourself. When we praise God, we clap our hands and we run around and we flip and we do all this stuff. But when we worship God, we love on him. And we allow the Father to pour into us what we need. See, worship is your vehicle into the presence of the Lord. And we've become so accustomed to just being, you know, emotional and expressive. And nothing is wrong with that in our praise. But you got to know when God wants to download something into you, he don't download it while you praise him. He downloads when you're in worship. Seeds are conceived when you are in intimate relationship. Right? Ain't no seed going to be conceived if we moving all fast. Y'all understand what I'm saying, don't you? You got to take your time and set the mood and say some good stuff in the ear. Am I talking right? Oh, yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a, a relevant house. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So I need you now to lift your hands. And I want you to start loving on the Father. Close your eyes. And I want you to start telling him how much he means to you. Because while you're worshiping him, he's doing some things in your body. I said, while you're worshiping him, he's doing some stuff for your, for your house, for your children. And he just wants you to love on him. And while you're loving on him, he's going to your son. He's going to your daughter. He's going into that female area. He's going into that back area. He's going into every part of your being. And he's ministering to you. So come on. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. I don't know. I just want to call you pastor. 
I want to say, Pastor, I don't know who you are, but there is such a gift of administration and leadership that rests on you. People listen to what you have to say. And the Father says it's time for you to become confident in who he's called you to be. Your life changes lives. I don't know what this is, but um, I just see people's lives being put in order. I see like structure, I see instruction that comes from you. And I hear the Father saying that he's getting ready to expand your audience. He is getting ready to give you greater influence. You are getting ready to have different clientele. I don't know what this is. But they're getting ready to seek you for consultation. You're getting ready to be sought out for wisdom. You're getting ready to be sought out for what you think. Where they're going to pick your brain. Because they recognize what rests on you. And in them seeking you out for wisdom and for strategy and for revelation and how to move next. There are millions attached to this. That the Father is going to release into your hands. And the Father says he's doing it because he can trust you. I see you getting on and off of airplanes. And, and doing presentations. I don't know what you do. But God is getting ready to increase your level of influence. And he is getting ready to change your clientele. You've been praying and asking God to breathe on this business. And the Father said he's heard your cry. Can we worship for her? Can we worship for her? Can we worship for her? You're getting ready to go. You're getting ready to go. They're going to send for you. They're going to pay for your services. They're going to value what you give. They're not going to try to drew you down with your prices. They will understand that what you have is valuable. So you will no longer lower your prices and, to, and, and lower your services to fit man. Because this new group is going to give you exactly what you're worth. I hear the Father saying it. You've been faithful over the small. You've been faithful over the little. And the Father says he's getting ready to reward you with much. Y'all stop worshiping, huh? Y'all stop worshiping, huh? Y'all put your hands down. Which showed me what I was saying. There are some things you want God to do, and God is requiring you to become intimate with him. Where you're willing to uh, 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 put your flesh aside, and you're not worried about how you look, and you're not worried about tears falling from your face. And you're not worried about, you know, if you look crazy, this is you and God. This is you and God. Because you need him. And he wants you to call on him. He said, if you call unto me, I will answer you. And I will show you great things and mighty things that you never even knew I could do for you. This is the season where God is going to exceed our expectations. And he's going to release more to us than we've ever asked for. But we got to be in a posture to receive it. Right? We got to be in a place, in a posture to, to be able to receive the download when he releases it. Just for a couple of more seconds, just love on him. Just love on him. Just love on him. Just love on them. Just love on them. Just for a few more seconds. Just for a few more seconds. Just for a few more seconds. There's a word he's given me to release, but I feel the presence of God. Come on, just worship him for a few more seconds. A few more seconds. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is, but you are in the valley of decision. You're in a valley of decision, and I see you trying to make a geographical move. I don't know, what is it, Atlanta or Texas? You're trying to dip. But you got to move at the right time. I don't care what's being offered to you. 
You cannot miss God in this season. Are you listening to me? I don't know what's going on. I know what God is saying. I know you're tired and frustrated, and it seems like things ain't getting off the ground. But I hear the Lord say, give it a little bit more time. Don't move too soon. He said, tell him, don't move too soon. He said, tell him, give me a little bit more time. Because I'm going to do some things for him. Tell him, he got to trust me when he don't know that I'm moving on his behalf. He said, tell him, stop trying to move so quick because you're not seeing the results when you want to see it. He said, give me some time. Because wherever you were headed, it was a trap from the, uh, from the enemy. Wherever you were planning, it, I mean, I see you making plans. I see you packing up. I see you saying that these are my last few days, my last few weeks. I'm moving. I'm relocating. And God just sent me to tell you, unpack your boxes. Because he's going to bless you in the land of your affliction. The enemy's got to see what God is getting ready to do for you. Stop trying to run from it. He wants to bless you right here. Use you right here. Restore you right here. Compensate you right here. Don't you move. Don't you move. Can we worship the Lord? Can we worship the Lord? Don't you move. You will reach out to me and you will tell me things have turned around. And I'm declaring that in the first quarter of this year, that the things you've been praying for for years, that it will be released to you. The job, the car, the house, the credit being uh, uh, cleared, everything you need. I declare that in the first quarter of this year, by March, you will see things begin to line up. If we agree with this word, can we give God glory? I said, if we agree with the word of the Lord, if we agree with the word of the Lord, can we open our mouths and give him glory? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I minister some more. There's so much, so many needs in the house. So many needs in the house. I can just go and just lay hands and prophesy to everybody. I want to release the word of the Lord. I want to release the word of the Lord that he's given to me for the house. Hallelujah. Sam, was that word right? Because some folks don't believe that God speaks through people. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear what you said. You was going to Texas? When was you moving? Huh? He was making plans to move to Texas. Because he feels like things ain't happening here, but God's going to make it happen right here. God's going to cause it to happen right here. He's going to prove himself to you. Can we give God praise? I said he's going to prove himself to you. Some of y'all need to try them again. Some of y'all done gave up because it didn't happen as fast as you wanted it to happen. But the Lord is saying, try me again. Trust me again. Don't you move too soon. Let me be God in your life. Don't you walk away from that marriage too soon. Don't you walk away from that job too soon. Don't you leave the house that he sent you in too soon. The Father says, trust me. Good. I'm gonna make it good. I'm gonna cause it to all work for your good. The disappointment, the hurt, the pain, the rejection, the layoff, the walk away, the divorce, the separation, the sickness. I'm gonna cause it to work for your good. He said, Try me again. 
trust me again and see won't I be God I will open up the windows of heaven and I will pour blessings out to you that you won't even have enough room to receive you gotta trust me you gotta try me you gotta prove me and see won't I do what I promised the father says I am a promise keeper the father says I keep my word that I've spoken over my children. The Father says, I watch over it. And I make sure it goes and does what it's supposed to do. I'm not a man. I don't lie. Nor will I ever be the son that will repent if I said it. If I said it. Shall I not perform it? If I said it, shall I not make it good? If I said it, you can go ahead and cash it. I'm going to do just what I said. Receive the word of the Lord. Receive the word. Some of y'all was getting ready to make some moves. You was going to make some moves in your flesh. You was about to turn in your resignation letter when God sent you there. They don't like me and the boss is fighting me. The enemy is fighting you because the enemy understands that your presence is going to cause things to line up. I don't want to be in this family no more. They don't like me. You've been sent as the curse breaker. You can't go nowhere. I'm tired of this ministry. I ain't nothing happening. They're not using me. You've been sent to receive impartation. You've been sent to grow and develop spiritually. Don't you move. Don't you move too soon. God is going to keep his word over your life. He's going to keep his promises to you. You got to trust him. You got to trust him. You got to move yourself out of the way. You got to take your hands off of it. Are y'all listening to me? We can't make emotional moves in this season. Our emotions ain't lie. Our emotions go up and down. Our emotions fluctuate. That's why the Bible says those that are sons and daughters of God, they're led by the Spirit, not led by our feelings and our emotions. The Father says, trust me again. Try me again. And watch me make good what I've spoken over your life. Get your Bibles, Ezekiel. I honor the pastor. I honor, that's my brother. I honor first lady. That's my sister. I honor you guys. I didn't know it's been eight years since I've been here. And a lot has transpired in eight years. Let's give it up for this band. Y'all killing. Oh, y'all, y'all give it up for the musicians. Now, can y'all help me celebrate this man and woman of God that has weathered the storms. I don't know. I don't know all the storms that they've weathered. But I know what the Father has, has said to me and shown me. And they have had to weather some major storms. And they've had to keep going. And they've had to keep serving. And they've had to keep preaching. And they've had to keep loving and keep being a parent, keep being mommy, keep being daddy. And you had to keep being husband and wife to each other, even in the midst of these storms. But the Father says to tell you guys that you survive the worst storms and you will not see those type of storms ever again. This last hit that you all have experienced, he said you won't see that ever again again. This last thing, I don't know what it is. It was supposed to make you walk away from ministry. It was supposed to cause you guys to say, we don't want to be married no more. This was an attack against your call. It was an attack against your marriage, which ultimately would have impacted your children. It was an attack against your seed. But we thank God that he gave you all the strength to remain standing. And this season that you are in now is giving to be a season where God is getting ready to make it up to you. 
God is giving to make it up to you. You all have been through years of weeding. It's been, it's been, it's been something. It's like, whew, like the Father has used all these years to weed out and to expose. But I want you guys to be at peace now because who the Father is sending into this house now I need you guys to be at peace. I don't, I don't want you guys to walk around nervous and afraid to trust. I don't want you guys to deal with the members. First lady, come. I don't want you to deal with the women uh, with a long handle, sp handle spoon. I, I don't want you to do that. You know, you, you, you sweet as pie, you my sister. But you have been so broken because you've been mishandled. And so now you've made up in your mind, I'm not going to let nobody get that close. I'm not going to let nobody, you know, get into the inner parts of who I really am. But the Father says to tell you that the people he sent now, you're safe. Do you hear me? You are safe. And you will no longer endure what you've had to endure for years. No more silent tears because you feel abused and mishandled. God says that these tears in this season will be tears of joy because you will begin to see the fruit of your prayers. I, I, I got to lay my hand on you. I got to lay my hand on you because you, you have been in a very low, dark place. A very low place and you're trying to push and you're trying to keep going. And it's like you can't shake this thing. I'm going to lay my hands on you, sis. And that spirit of heaviness and that spirit that wants you to feel depressed and wants you to feel irrelevant and wants you to feel unqualified, I'm going to break it off of you. Because all of those things that you had to endure is what has given you the anointing that rests on your life right now. There's a power that you possess, baby, that is like dynamite. And they are getting ready to see. This ministry, those that belong here, are getting ready to see you in a different light. There is an authority that you're about to rise up in. There's a strength that the Father is getting ready to cause you to stand in. And you will be resolute. You will be uh, uh, unflinching. You will be unapologetic in who God has called you to be. Why? Because you took the whippings well. You took your cross and carried it well. And now God says they're getting ready to see the fruit of what suffering produces. Because suffering produces power. And the Father says to tell you that he's released a double portion upon your life. No more tears of sorrow. No more tears of loneliness. No more tears when you feel misunderstood. But you will rise in power and in strength and in authority, say of the Lord. Can you all pray for your first lady? I need you all to pray. I need you all to pray. You are a, you are a silent assassin. Musicians. Musicians, y'all gonna have to flow with me, baby. Y'all y'all gonna have to y'all gonna have to flow with me. You're a silent assassin. And do you understand that the enemy don't like silent assassins? He don't like snipers in the spirit. And there's a target on the back of those who see spirits. There's a target on the back of those who are a threat to him. So if he can't get you, then he uses the people closest to you. And he will try to cause them to mess with your heart. So that you will become bitter, you will become resentful, and you will ultimately isolate yourself from the same people you're called to minister to. It's a trick of the enemy. But his trick is cancel. Do you all hear what I'm saying? The plan that he has had over your first ladies, over this woman of God's life, it is canceled. It is annihilated. 
it is severed. The contract is broken in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. She will be who God has called her to be. She will say what God has given her to say. From this day forward, and there's an army of women that the Father is raising up that will stand with her, that will hold up her arms, that will pray for her, that will intercede for her. There's an army of women. There's an army of men, strong men, strong men, wise men. Oh, that God is getting ready to send in this house. And I know, I know that y'all are in this building. And I don't know what this is, but this ain't the building. God is getting ready to finally give y'all your own. So the Lord says to tell you, you better go and look again. Because I'm going to give you favor with the men in high places. This is just a pit stop. It was not meant for it to become permanent. I don't hear nobody. I said it was just a pit stop. And the pit stop has become too long. The pit stop, the pit stop has become too long. Never make a pit stop permanent. The job you're working on is a pit stop. The house you're living in now is a pit stop. The situation you're in is a pit stop. It's not permanent. It's preparing you for bigger. Somebody shout bigger. It's preparing you for greater. Somebody shout greater. It's preparing you for more. Somebody shout more. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. The ones that love her. The ones that y'all got her back from this day forward. From this day forward. From this day forward. Don't you allow this woman of God and this man of God to feel like they in this thing by themselves. Let them know you got their back. Let them know that God sent you here. And that you're in for the long haul. That you're riding with them. Are you all hearing me? There is an there oil that rests on this man. That is not... Uh, ordinary it is very uncommon it is well beyond his years there is an oil on him uh, and a mantle on him for, 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 for miracles it, it's, it's, a, it's like a Bishop Mason anointing it's an it's a, it's a old ancient anointing that rests upon him but God will give him a relevant uh, and, 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 and like a modern flair with the old anointing and the Lord is getting ready to cause the anointing and the relevance to merge. And you'll begin to see a different breed, a different kind of people coming into your ministry. And so that's why I told you guys that this place is just a pit stop. Because where you're getting ready to go next is going to amplify and it's going to visualize what the kingdom looks like. They're getting ready to be some, a, a very great influx of Hispanic people. That is going to flood this ministry. They're going to be a great influx of Haitians. I see Africans that are going to that are going to flood this ministry. But a very very high influx of the Hispanic community will be a part of this ministry. So you guys got to change your thinking. You got you got to change your thinking. I understand how we've been raised and what we've been taught. But the assignment on you is bigger than what you've been taught. The assignment on you is greater. And I don't know what this is because we haven't taught. We, we just, hey, bro, you good? 
but there are some things that you thought was owed to you and it didn't happen for you and the Lord said to tell you that he's the one that blocked it he said because if you would have gotten that position if you would have gotten into that seat it would have boxed you in And you all cannot be boxed in because there is a kingdom mandate. A mandate is a command. A mandate is something that must be followed through. And anytime we try to do it the way we think it should be done, he's going to continue to cause doors to close, opportunities to fail, things to not line up because God is saying, you got to do it my way. And my way may not be what you're used to, but I will teach you, and I will show you, and I will give you how to move in and how to come out, and I will cause you to be as a chameleon where you will go into the White House and you will go amongst politicians and you will go amongst city officials and you will have the tongue of the learned. You will go amongst those who don't believe in God and I will give you what to say. You will go amongst those who are unchurched and don't have a desire for church and I will give you the word of the Lord to release to them. Oh, you will go in amongst those who are ex-felons. You will go and you will minister to those who are former uh, 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 sellers of drugs you will go the father says I've sent you all to the broken they're not going to look like you and Toya they're not going to think like you and Toya they ain't even been raised like you and Toya but I trust you with the broken I trust you all with the hurting I trust you all with the confused. I trust you with the strippers. I trust you with the drug dealers. I trust you with them. And they're going to be the ones to back your vision. Did you all hear what I just said? I said, and they're going to be the ones to back the vision of this house. You've been looking for the help from the wrong place. That's a word. Some of you have been looking for help. And you're looking for it from the wrong place, from the wrong people. You want the, the blessings, but you want it to come packaged the way you want it packaged. And the Father is saying, you're missing out because you don't know how I'm going to send my blessing. I will use whoever I desire to use to be a blessing to you. I will deal with the heart of a wicked man and turn it to work in your favor. He is getting ready to cause those that are deemed as rejects, those that are deemed as unworthy, those that are uncouthed, those that don't know. But they're going to come and follow you to this ministry. I see you gathering them from the barbershops. I see you uh, 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 meeting up with them as you shop because you got a shopping spirit on you. So I see when you're going through and you're shopping, they're going to want to know, Doc, what, 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 what you do? Because you look like you can be like an NFL agent or something. Like what you do? You got this thing on you that look like you somebody. And you'll be able to share the word of the Lord. Man, I'm a, I'm a man of God. I am God's voice. And there's a reason why you ask me who I am. It's because God is dealing with your heart. They're going to follow you back. This is going to be a house full of strong men. Single women, don't y'all go nowhere. Don't y'all go nowhere. Because God is getting ready to do something new in this house. It's a new building. It's a new people. And it's new influence that's being released to Life Point Church. You got the right name. Because he's going to use this house to bring life to those who are dead. Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. Somebody give me a phone so I can read it. Ezekiel the 37th chapter. My man had the Bible ready for me. Come on, give me Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessings upon you. The Lord took hold of me. Keep on playing, y'all. And I was carried away 
by the Spirit of the Lord. I was carried away to a valley that was filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. And these bones, they were scattered everywhere. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and they were completely dried out. And then he asked me, Toya, Major, Life Point, all of you that are here, the Lord asked, he said, son of man, a daughter, can these bones, can they become alive again? And we replied, oh, sovereign Lord, only you know the answer to that. And then the Lord said to us, speak a prophetic message to these bones. And I want you to say to the bones, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. He says, look, I am going to put breath into you and I am going to cause you to live again and I will put flesh and muscles on you and I will cover you with skin I will put my breath into you and you will come to life then you will know that I am the Lord so I spoke the message as the Lord told me and suddenly as I begin to speak there was a rattling noise that came all across this valley of dry bones and the bones of each body it came together and it attached themselves together bone to bone uh -uh, the leg bone and the knee bone and the elbows and all the bones began to come together then as they came together the Bible says that flesh now begins to cover the bones and what was dry and what looked lost its coloration is now receiving its color back and then as these bones begin to come together and the flesh begins to come on the bones, now there's a rattling because there's some movement that begins to come. And as the movement is coming, the Lord is telling the prophet, the Lord is telling the prophet, the Lord is telling the prophet to prophesy to the bones. I know that the bones have been dead for years. I know that it hasn't worked for years. I know that things seem to be the way it's going to be and I need to give up. But God is saying to speak to the dry bones and command the dry things, the dead things, the stuck things. Command it to live. Command the marriage to come alive again. Command the business to come alive again. Command your health to come. Y'all too quiet. I said command it. He said, speak to the bones and command the bones to rise up. And so he did as the Lord told him to do. And he begins to prophesy. And now there's a rattling, there's a noise. And he's watching now these bones that have laid dry and desolate and empty and lifeless for years. He now begins to see the movement of the bones. And the bones now begin to stand and receive a strength. And now the Bible says that the bones that were dead is now standing as a strong army. Is now standing as a mighty army army there is an army oh Kotaya there is an army that God is causing to rise again in this house in your life there is an army that is being resurrected there is an army that's being resuscitated life is being restored life is being renewed life is being breathed back into you these bones 
these bones that were addicted to drugs, <laughs> these bones that were addicted to alcohol, these bones that were addicted to drugs and, 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 and perversion, these drugs that were addicted to weed, y'all don't smoke none, do you? These drugs, y'all don't get lit, do you? That's right, amen. These, 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 these bones that were addicted to, to, to lust, uh-huh, he was scared to death. I ain't, ain't going to say nothing to you. These, these, these bones, these bones that were addicted to dysfunction, Huh? These bones, these bones, these bones that were that were that, 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 that were counted done. These bones that they said it's over. The fowl came and ate the skin off of it. These same bones, these same bones that looked like it was over for them, is now rising up in strength like a mighty army. And the bones stood up, and God says, okay. Keep speaking life to it. Keep speaking strength to it. Keep prophesying even if you don't see it. Because eventually you're going to begin to see what the Father has said to you. He says keep prophesying to it. Keep speaking life. They may still be acting up. You keep prophesying. It may still be hurting in your body. Keep prophesying. I am healed. There may be still confusion breaking out in your house. There is peace in my home. We may be separated, but my marriage is going to be restored. My child may be unsaved, but I birthed the seed that is righteous and they will come to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I may not be making the money I want to make but I am prosperous and the favor of God is abounding in every area of my life. I may be working for somebody else but God promised me that I will have my own. I will be the head and not, why are y'all so quiet? I'll be the head and not the tail. I'll be above and not beneath. I'll be the lender and not the borrower. I got my man clapping for me. I don't know what's wrong with y'all, but the word is good all by itself. You better learn how to start using your voice to prophesy. That's why it's been an attack on your voice. Because the enemy understands the power that's in your mouth. I will not be silent. If I got to whisper it out, I'm going to get it out. I will have what I declare. You shall declare a thing and it will be established. Y'all sung today, I will not be silent. That is our decree. From this year going forward, we won't be quiet. We won't be silent. We won't stop praying. We won't stop travailing. We won't stop seeking. We won't stop singing. We won't stop shouting. We won't stop testifying. I don't hear nobody in this house. Open up your mouth. Use your voice to give God some glory. Come on. Use your voice. Use your voice. Come on and use your voice. Start declaring. Healing is my portion. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is mine. For the asking, deliverance is mine. Freedom is mine. Joy is mine. Yeah, prophesy, declare it, speak it. And you're going to have what you say. The army, the army is standing up. They look good on the outside, baby. They got to look. Because life has been breathed into them. And Ezekiel looks at them. He begins to hear what they had to say. And you follow, make sure I'm saying it right. He says, How do you feel? You've been bound so long. 
you've been stuck so long, you've been in a dry place for a long time. How do you feel? The bones respond and say, we feel like we have no hope. We feel like our hope is lost. And at that moment, Ezekiel could have gotten discouraged and said, oh God, they ain't going to come all the way into what God has for them. And instead, the father says, Ezekiel, I don't want you to be discouraged by them saying they have no hope. I want you to keep prophesying. And I will send the north wind and the south wind. And I'm going to send the east wind and the west wind to come and breathe into these uh, bones that feel like, come on, baby girl, am I preaching good? That feel like they have uh, no hope. And as the wind of God begin to take them over, the Bible says, what did the Bible say? Are you following me? He says, son of man, these bones, they represent the people of Israel. And they've said, we've become old dry bones. Our hope is gone. We're finished. And God says, prophesy to them. And you say this, that this is what the sovereign Lord is saying to you. Oh, my people, let her come. Oh, my people, I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Are you recording me? All right, I want you to walk with me. I will bring you back to the land. Tell me where I'm at, baby. This baby doesn't distract me. There's such an anointing on her. Where I'm at? Oh, my people. I will open your graves of exile, Sam, and I will cause you to rise again. Huh? Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel, the same land where you felt dry, the same place where you felt like it wasn't going to happen. Huh? I'm going to bring you right back to that land, and then what? And then what? And when this happens... Oh, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live again and return back to your homeland, and you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken it. This is the word of the Lord to the people of God that are in this house today. God is going to do it again. God is going to do it again. God is getting ready to cause you to live again. Anybody want to receive a new life from the Father? Lift your hands today. Open up your mouth and begin to declare New life over your life. New joy. New contracts. New opportunities. I don't hear you guys. Begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy. Salvation comes to my house. Deliverance comes to my house. The back of the enemy is being broken off of my children, off of my marriage, off of my health, off of my money. This is the word. Oh, the Lord, I won't stop prophesying. I won't stop declaring. I'm going to keep talking until what I see is what God said. Give God glory. Give God glory. God, I thank you. I thank you for this baby that is so full of joy. I thank you for the call and the mandate that rests upon our life. I thank you for this, the joy and your presence that rests on her.
And I thank you for the voice that you've given to her already at a young age. I pray, Father, that you will use her to prophesy and to give the word of the Lord. I thank you for who she is to her family. God, you've given her to them as a gift. Hando Kote, Rabasai. Oh, I bless you for this young baby that will be and rise up as God's prophet. You will declare what thus saith the Lord. Yes, you will. You will, you will say what God tells you to say. And you will be a blessing to your family and to your friends and to your teachers and to the environment and where you stand. When you step in a room, there's a light that comes with you. And that's the light of God. God's hand is already on you, baby girl. And I pray a covering over you now. Let no evil father come nigh her. Let nothing come to taint her. Let nothing come to violate her. I pray a covering over her. I thank you, Father, that she shall be raised well. Oh, yes. It will be likened unto a, a child that has a Nazarite vow over their lives. There will be things that God will not allow you to do. There will be places that you will not be allowed to go into because we have to cover what's on your life. So I thank you, Father, for the wisdom that you're giving her parents to rear this mighty woman of God, this mighty daughter of yours, to be reared in the right way for you will use her and you will cause her to declare your word across the nation i thank you father for this great revivalist i thank you father oh oh i thank you god for this baby who will be as the catherine kuman of her day god your anointing overtake her yes lord Overshadow her. Lift those hands, baby. Lift both of your hands and receive this impartation. God is going to use your hands to heal. Lift your hands. Look at me. Lift your hands. I'm getting ready to lay my hands on you and I'm getting ready to pray. I'm getting ready to pray for you that the anointing of God will take you over and that this age you will be able to see and you'll be able to hear the voice of God. You ready for it? You want it? Receive it now. God, I thank you for using her life to win many souls to you. I bless you for her. Keep her body well and healthy. In the name of Jesus. And bless this mother who's birthed such a special child. I speak peace to you now. It's okay. It's all good. Y'all have a special family. The hand of God is on this house. The hand of God is on this house. Where's the dad? The hand of God is on the house. Huh? Okay. Because there's a, there's a blessing upon your household. You guys are a special house. Take the baby. We don't want her to be scared. But the hand of the Lord is on your family, especially this child right here. And I need you to listen very carefully to when she talks and when she wants to show you things. If she says, Mommy, look out the window. I see something in the sky. Run to the window. Mommy, I can't sleep. I saw something in my room. Listen to what she's saying because she sees already in the spirit. And God's going to give you the wisdom on how to rear a seer. Because that's what you birthed. A seer is a prophet. She's, she has the ability to see. And you're going to help her to understand who she is. So raise her right. Don't let everything go into their ears. Don't let everything uh, 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 be seen by their eyes. Don't let them see disagreements between you and your husband. Cause them to always see the both of you united. And there's such, a, there's such a heavy mandate upon your husband's life as well. He is, he is a preacher. He's a preacher. He's supposed to be preaching the gospel. And so we got to pray that God provides an opportunity for him to be compensated financially so that he can be under the right tutelage. And you guys won't be separated in worship. Because whether you know it or not, y'all are being trained trained to rule and reign because what's on him 
cannot be limited to one building. I'm telling y'all, he's supposed to be sending out men and women of God in different hubs and different locations all across this region. And you and your husband are the couple, one of them that he's going to send out. Y'all mark my words. Have I said anything wrong yet? I said, you and your husband are going to be one of the couples that will be sent out as a branch of Life Point Church. And you all will lead people and you will shepherd them. And you will teach them the word of the Lord. And your husband will come into agreement with the will of God for his life. And I pray that God will give this baby a word for her daddy. That he will hear and know that it is God. Come on, clap your hands. You want to stay up here with me? Sit right there. Give her her phone so she can record. You're getting ready to live again. I want to lay hands. Because I'm finished. I think I did enough. What y'all say? Did y'all get the word? I want to. You all right with me? My other man gone, huh? I want to minister to those of you in this house that felt like those bones, that felt like your hope has been gone, and you felt dry, and you felt like you just didn't even want to live and go on. I just want to lay my hands over you, lay my hands on you, and minister strength to you, and minister joy to you so that you will be able to enjoy the blessings that the Father wants to release to you this year. The Father said to me, he said, tell my people that 2023 will be the year of bigger. Not just big, he said, but tell them bigger than they can ever imagine. He said, I'm going to give them big grace to do big things. And they will give me big gratitude that is what we receive and we're declaring it for this year the year of bigger bigger building bigger membership bigger opportunities bigger love bigger joy bigger peace greater favor we're declaring bigger for our lives for this year and in the years to come so if you're here and the word of the Lord has ministered to you, and you just want me to minister to you. How much time I got? You just want me to know I got to catch a plane. I, okay. <laughs> Talking about work. I, I got to go home. All right. Come on. If you're here, all right, let, 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 let's do me a favor. You don't have to stand if you don't want to, but let's begin to fill this house with worship. Hold one second. Let me see what song I want. Just begin to fill this house with worship. The Father's getting ready to do some ministry here at this altar. Ande quarter abasanda la bocotai. Come on, baby. I want to pray for you. Come on. If you're here and you feel the tug from the Holy Spirit to come, I want you to line up across this altar. Glory to God. I thank you for your word, Father, that's been released. And I thank you for your sons and daughters. I thank you for your sons and daughters who you are restoring and reviving again. Thank you, Lord. For doing a new thing. Psalmist, where my girl that sing? She's still here? Come on, babe, get a mic for me. I want us to flow in the spirit. Come on, y'all, help the people. Move them up, line them up so we can have room. Come on, y'all, step up for me. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. So we can have room for everybody. Hallelujah. Go ahead, whatever God begins to give to you. You don't wait for him. You lead it. You a prophetic psalmist. You set the pace. You set the atmosphere. And he follows you. Just lift your hands at this altar. You got a look on you, baby. You look like you were worth a million dollars. 
You got something on you that is major. And I don't know who you are, but you're supposed to be on television. And God is getting ready to cause the right people to find you. And he is getting ready to send the investors to you to give you everything that you need. You got big vision. You got big aspirations. And guess what God says? I'm the one that put those, those desires and those aspirations into you. I don't know. I see some type of magazine that you're supposed to uh, be like the editor over or, or some ad magazine that you're going to release that 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 features uh, women bosses and features uh, women in, in, in leadership uh, capacities. It features women in entertainment. It features women uh, 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 in, 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 in education. It's women. It's something about women that are leaders, uh, women that are bossy. Hey, God, I thank you for causing this woe, the word that's spoken over her, to come to pass, uh, cause it to live. There's some things you gave to her, and it has lied dormant, and God has said to tell you, pick it right back up because now I'm getting ready to cause it to take wind and pick up strength. Oh, oh. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands, lift your hands. Come on, lift those hands. Lift those hands. God is going to meet you at the point of your knee. Oh. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies. God has heard your cry, honey. God has heard your cry. Your decision to say yes to God made some people very close to you upset. And a lot of your family and a lot of those that are dear to you they don't understand the decision that you've made and why you carry your life the way you've carried your life at this season but they don't understand that you almost lost your life when you was living for the enemy you made a commitment and a vow to give God your everything on this side and the father says to tell you that your faithfulness to him has not gone unnoticed. He says to tell you, daughter, I see you. I see what you've walked away from. I see what you've said no to. I've seen the sacrifice that you've made to live for me. I see you in your house saying, God, I'm trying to do this thing right. I don't want to go back. And God says he gives you strength to keep going. You are the source of my strength. That's what you got to declare every time you feel weak. And you are the strength of my life. I want you to say that. Say you are. That's it. You are. God, I thank you now for being her strength, for being her joy, for being her provider. Let her not have to worry about how a bill is going to be paid. Let her not worry about how things are going to happen for her house. I thank you, God, for supernatural provision being released to her, to her family. I declare now that the struggle is over, the strain is over, and God is letting you know that he's heard your cry, daughter. And he's honoring your obedience to him. He said, these years will be your best years. Your ladder shall be greater. And what's coming for you is greater than what you've had to endure. It's greater than what you survived. But this is the year the Father says to you, this is the season where I pour blessings upon you. And you will be able to enjoy the benefits of saying yes to him. Just worship the Lord. You are the source of my strength. Oh, oh when you are, yes, you are the strength, the strength to stand, the strength to stand. The strength to be who God has called you to be. The strength to use your voice. 
to bring, to bring about deliverance, to bring about healing. The Father has given you an, a wisdom that the natural mind does not have. You operate and you speak from the Father's wisdom. When you speak, God has sanctioned what you said. May the words you speak and every sector you go in and out of, may they be received. I thank you, Father, for using your daughter and sitting her in seats in high places. I thank you, Father, for causing her to be the strategist in the boardrooms with billionaires. I thank you, Father, for your favor that you are allowing even to be increased for her business and even favor God for her house. You know the desires of her heart, God. And you promised to give her the desires. You told her that this time it was going to be different. So God, keep your word. You told her this time it would not be the same. So keep your word to her and do what needs to be done and fix what needs to be fixed and turn what needs to be turned and change what needs to be changed in the name of Jesus and she will testify that you've done it she won't keep no glory to herself but she will declare that she knows that you did it I thank you God that there will be a, a joy that comes from you that you will release to her life a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. Do it for your daughter in Jesus' name. Just lift your hands right here. And I lift my hands. I, I live, I live my hands in total praise to to you now hold on now y'all come on just open up your mouth right here and begin to worship the lord come on lift up worship lift up worship lift up worship can you all lift up worship in this house can y'all lift up worship in this house there's an impartation that the father is going to release here there's an impartation that god wants to leave in this place and I just want you, whether you're sitting, whether you're standing, whether you're in the back, I love y'all. Y'all to push me the whole day. Whether you're in the back, wherever you are, I want you to lift your hands. I want you to receive now what the Father is releasing. Don't you come here today and not get everything that God has for you. Come on, lift your hands right now and just say, yes, Lord, whatever you want to give to me, I want it. Whatever you want to release to me, I want it. I thank you, Father, for touching the mind of these, your sons. I thank you, Father, for full restoration. I thank you, Father, for dealing with their faculties. Yes, Lord, keep them protected. Keep them protected. Let no evil come nigh them, no mishandling, no abuse in the name of Jesus. And God called them to feel your presence. They may not understand all that's going on, but they can't deny your presence. So God, do it for them even now in the name of Jesus. Can we worship the Lord? That's it. That's it. Come on. Tap in. That's it. Come on. Tap into that. Come on. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. God ain't forgot about y'all over on this side. God ain't forgot about y'all. The blessings of the Lord rest on you. The blessings of the Lord rest on you. The blessings of the Lord rest on you. In the name of Jesus. And I speak to this baby's airways. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for going into the area of her heart. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for keeping this baby healthy. Thank you, God, that her organs and everything internally is strong. It's strong. It's strong. Her heart is strong. The kidneys are strong. It's a little girl, right? The lungs are strong. Yeah. They're strong. The enemy didn't want this baby to be here. This child fought. This baby is a fighter, and the enemy wanted her dead, but this baby fought, and you couldn't have her then, and you won't have her now. I declare long life, long life over her, long life, long life 
In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Father, for this little girl. What's her name? Jovi. I thank you for Jovi. And I thank you for the mandate that rests upon her life. Tell me what happened to her when she was a baby. Tell me what happened. I see a lot going. I see tubes. I see all kind of stuff. This baby <laughs> was destined to live. She stayed in the hospital a long time, huh? No? What happened? What is it? Okay. Uh-huh. I see her fighting to get here. And God's hand was on her. Because she had to be here. And you will understand who you birthed. She's not just a regular child. Her mind is not going to be the mind of an average child. She, she's going to have the ability to, to know things that a genius. This child is going to be a genius. She is going to be a genius. I'm talking everything, academics will come easy for her. This baby, you will not have to pay a dime for her to go to the best schools. They will send for her. She will be able to choose where she wants to go. Very articulate, very advanced. You will see, you will see, you're gonna say, this, did this child come from me? Because it's gonna look strange because I'm telling you, you've never seen it on this wise. She will be able to read complete sentences read books by the age of two years old. Watch what I tell you. Jovi, the hand of the Lord rests on Jovi's life. Can we thank God? Can we thank God? Can we thank God? God bless this family. Bless this mother, mother and father. Bless this union. Grab hands. This union is so blessed. This house is so blessed. Here's another couple, Pastor Jones. Y'all go here. Y'all visit, where you go? Huh. How far you live from here? All right, I need y'all to keep coming here for me. I need y'all to keep coming here. You a preacher? Yeah, yeah, you are. You was a pastor? Huh. Okay. You, will you do me a favor and keep visiting? I want you to keep visiting. Because this man of God here needs your help. For where he's going and for what God has for him to do, he needs your mind. He needs your wisdom. He needs your insight. And I don't know what this is, but where you were before, they didn't value your wisdom. They didn't value the things that you knew. You have the ability to see. and You see very clear. You know what's fake. You know what's real. You know what's off. You know what's on. And um, to a person that's intimidated or a person that's threatened, they will, they will view you as being out of line and insubordinate and unsubmissive and all of those things. But you a man. You ain't, you ain't no punk. So you ain't going to just go just for anything. And you're not going to allow a man to degrade you as a man. But the father is saying to you, try him again. I want you to try it here. I want you to try this man of God. I want you to try this man of God. He need you, you need him. She need you and you need her. Because it's, I didn't know y'all didn't go here because when I was talking about couples that would be sent out to do ministry, I saw your family. But I saw him being the one to send you guys out. It's like y'all will be doing Bible studies. What you do in sports? No coaching? Okay. You have a heart for young men. Um, I see you breaking the word of God down to young boys, to young men, teaching them the principles of the Bible, the, the, the basic principles, and just sharing the word of the Lord. And God will show you what community to go to, and God will give you the place to be able to teach the word of God. But your heart is for, for youth. You got a youth ministry here? Is it good? Y'all got, got some men up there? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Rebuilding. God's sending everything that y'all need. 
I'm just, I'm just making stuff happen, ain't I? God, God is sending in everything that you need. They're supposed to help with youth ministry. There's a youth pastor oil that rests on him. So you ain't got to take my word for it. Go pray. Ask the Father. And if it agrees with your spirit, you come back here and I want you to meet with the pastor. But do you believe I'm speaking from the Lord? You believe it? I'm telling you what God is saying. I said I believe it because that's why I didn't want to come. Because you already knew what was going to happen. Yeah, she asked to visit this church last week, and I told her no. I, I, why y'all so quiet? What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> say what? They, they don't know how to rejoice and get happy. But what you say? Yeah, I just, I, I, know what, I know what God calls me to. I know how he calls me to senior leaders to help them and to push their ministries forward. Sometimes it just gets disheartening on my end because I'm always the second guy, and sometimes I'm not valued. What I, what I have because I see the things that God want to do and so she asked to come last week and I said I don't want to do that I said because I don't want to join that ministry she said it's just visiting I said yeah I know what you say but I know what God's telling me and I said I don't want to I don't want to join the ministry because I don't want to have to relearn another ministry I don't want to have to relearn another leader I don't want to have to go through all that heartbreak so I'd rather just stay on cyber ministry teaching and preaching the word of God and um, yeah the word of the Lord has been spoken. Y'all clap your hands for this new family. Baby, God has heard your prayer. The prayers of the righteous. Why are y'all so quiet? God has released the word in here. And you all are seeing full manifest. God has heard your prayer. So everything that you need, everything you desire, everything that you desire for the Lord to do, he said just ask of me just ask of me this is a sign to you the Lord says to let you know that he hears your prayers and he will answer the very prayer of your heart give God some glory y'all gotta know how to respond y'all don't know how to respond when God releases a word and gives confirmation in the same service. God is real. His word is real. I don't know him. I don't know y'all. But guess who does know you? God knows. Can we thank God for what he's getting ready to do in the life of this family? If you're a member of Life Point, you ought to be excited. Because God is sending help to this house. I ain't going to wear myself out. I said God is sending help to this house. I want every man to line up. Every man of this church. Keep playing, man of God. Every man in this church. Line up right here in the back. Every man. Every man. You go here, babe. You go here. You remember here. But oh, that's all right. Line up. Line up. Every man. I'm going to put my hand on every man. I'm going to get y'all. Don't y'all leave the altar. I'm going to lay my hands on you. You want me to pray for you. Don't y'all go nowhere. For those, that's all right. You don't want it, you can go have a seat. For those that do, stay right there. I got to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because there is an attack against men. My man said, I don't want that. Because your house need it. I'm going to get them good. <laughs> Over there acting like can't nobody see him with all them colors on his shirt. Get back here. Every man, let them come around this house. Because these are the leaders. The men are the head. They're the priest. They're the ones that set the pace. This, they, they set the marching orders for the house. And if the enemy can take out the strong man, then he has us. And he has our children. There is a war against the mind of our men. A lot of their fight ain't no physical fight. It's a fight in the mind. The fight to, to, to am I going to be able to provide? Am I going to be able to do it? Am I going to fail? 
shucks, am I going to be killed? Am I going to live long? Am I going to be another one that's in the news? There is an oil in this house, whether you're a member or not, that God wants to release over you guys, all these men. And God is going to send you a whole bunch of them. They may not be members today, but I'm telling you, God is already sealing in the heart where they're supposed to be. They're not here by accident. They didn't just come just to hear me. They came because this is the house that God wants them to serve in. Men, lift your hands. Husbands, fathers, brothers, coaches, teachers, administrators, entrepreneurs, those that's out here trying to make it happen. Car wash trucks, I see you. Food trucks, barber shops. Teachers. Pharmaceutical people that deal in medicine and science. There's so much here in this room right now. And I pray a covering over you. I pray a protection over you. I pray that the love of God will overshadow and overwhelm you. And I pray that at those moments you feel like you're by yourself and you can't really tell your wife how you feel and you can't really express yourself to the children because you the man. I pray that you will be vulnerable to give it to God. That you will be so vulnerable and feel safe enough to release your cares and your fears and your insecurities to the Father. And every time you go to the Father, the Father is going to give you exactly what you need. You guys have made a decision to live for the Lord. Many of you have walked away from some lifestyles that you were in for years. Many of you have taken a whole different turn. You was big bad in the streets and you said, I want to give my life to the Lord. God is not going to allow you to walk away and he not reward you in this life. Do you all hear what I'm saying? He is not going to allow you to walk away from all that money you was making. So now you got to work a regular job and sometimes it gets frustrating because this little penny money that I'm making now, I, I made five times that much in an hour. But I'm trying to do right. I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to set a better example for my sons and daughters. God is going to honor you. Don't you quit. Don't you go back. Don't even try to dibble and dabble in it. I don't care how rough and how low it gets. You go to God and say, God, I need you to make a way. Don't you even go back and play with it a little bit. I'm just going to do it for a little while, make this amount of money, and I'll be good. Don't you go back. I don't know who it's for. Actually, I do, but I ain't going to call you out. Just receive it. Don't go back. Because if you go back, you won't make it back out. Trust God for provision for your house, for your children, for your family. Continue to be the example for your sons and for your daughters and in the community. God is going to release the resources that you need for the businesses that he's put inside of you. God's going to give you the strength to keep getting up and going to work and making it happen. Glory to God. He's going to keep your bodies well. No sickness will come nigh you all's dwelling. I speak to the prostrate area and there will be no problems in that area. No appendix problems in the name of Jesus no kidney problems I don't care how much alcohol y'all drunk in the past it will not affect your body glory to God I thank you God that these men shall be strong shall be healthy I thank you father that these men will be leaders will be bold that these men will be strong will be prayer warriors I thank you father that these men will lead their homes with integrity with holiness, with godliness. I thank you, Father, that they'll be full of the word. Students, 
of your word. I thank you, Father, for these men that you're raising up in this house, in this community, in this region. God, bless these men. Cover these men. Keep these men healthy and strong. Give them strength to stand in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you that you will not allow their past to hinder what you want to release to them now. The past is not a factor for some of you that keep hanging the past over your own head. When you said sorry, when you asked for forgiveness, he wiped the slate clean. And I'm praying for your family members and for your wives and for those that you are in partnership with to stop reminding you of the man you used to be. That from this day forward, they will speak to you as the man you're called to be now. Because you are not what you did. So as of today, you all will rise up in strength and in power. You will take your homes back. You will take your children back. You will take the neighborhoods and the community for the glory of God. You will be men that will pray and intercede on behalf of your children, on behalf of your community. Come on, men. Lift your hands. God, release now a wisdom. Release strategy. Release revelation. Release patience. Release discernment upon these men. Give them understanding. Give them sensitivity in the name of Jesus. Give them compassion for their wives, for their mothers, for their children, for their community. And make them soul winners. Make them soul winners. Let them go and get other men. Other men. In the name of Jesus, I love to see it. Do it for him, God. Out of the prayer, God. That she has. If some of these men belong to y'all, come lay your hands on them. If some of these men belong to y'all, come lay your hands on them. Let's go. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for unity in the house. I thank you for oneness in the house. I thank you for togetherness in the house. I thank you for provision being released in the house. I thank you that there is no discord. There is no confusion. I thank you that they are unified. They operate with one band, one sound. No divorce, no divorce. No divorce, no divorce, no separation. Oh, yes, Lord. No loss of life, no murder, rabote, no racial stereotype. Cover our sons, cover these boys, cover our children. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Cover their minds, cover their bodies. Come on, man, pray for these men. Glory to God. Come on, lay your hand on the men. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all help them pray. Help them pray. Help them pray. Help them pray. Thank you, God, for a nation that will fear you. Thank you, Father, for our people that will honor you. Thank you, God, for marriages that reflect you. Thank you, Father, for families that will bring you glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands. Yes, Lord. Come on. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, restoration. Restoration. Restoration, restoration, be healed in your mind, in your spirit, in your emotions. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Y'all ain't praying. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes. Do it for your daughters. 
Do it for these mothers. Do it for these children. Do it for these ladies. Do it for these business owners. Do it for these hairstylists. Do it for these teachers. Whoop. Do it, Father. Do it, Father. Do it, Father. Your strength. Your strength. Your peace. Your joy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. May your lives never be the same because of the anointing. Can we lift our heads and give God glory? Can we give God glory? Hallelujah. Come on. Just lift your heads. May this house, may these people never be the same because of your power, God. May what took place in this place today, may it be lasting. May it be life-changing. May it be transformational. I thank you, God, that as of today, they will go forward and never look back. I thank you, Father, for making all things new. Just lift those hands. Just lift those hands. You just tapped in, my dude. Come on, lift those hands. Come on, lift them up. And thank God for newness. Newness for life point. Newness for your house. Newness for your marriage. Newness for your children. Newness for your business. Come on, you. Oh, oh you. You make all things new. And I will follow you. Come on, Sam. Take it. I, oh, 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 you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. God, I bless you. Come on, y'all. And I Don't y'all play with this anointing that's here. I want you to get the largest seed you can sow before you leave this house. Sow a seed into this ground. Come now. 
Lay it on here. Lay it in my hand. I want you all to give a sacrificial seed. If you could do at least $100, we're sowing into our new. Everybody get a seed in your hand. Everybody get a seed in your hand. Get the seed in your hand. I see you. I see your cell phones. I see your cell phones. You are ready, ready. The blessings of the Lord. Get a seed in your hand. Come on, just get it and bring it to me. And I will follow you. Come on, once you get it, come on. Come on. Oh, say you. Yeah. The blessings of the Lord rest on you. Hey, blessings of the Lord bless you. Come on, come on. All over this house, bring your seat. All over this house, get your seat. All over this house, let me touch your phone. Even, even if you have your phone, I want to lay my hand on it, okay? Let me tell you something. The money that's getting ready to be released into your lives is going to triple what you made last year. Do you all hear me? There is an anointing of increase that's in this house right now. And, and, and if it ain't a sacrifice, it's not going to get God's attention. I want you all to give a seed of sacrifice, a seed that says, God, thank you for seeing about us today. Thank you for releasing the word of the Lord over our house and over our lives. The, the giving platforms, you can text to give, 813-333-1014. They have Givelify, and then you always have the offering bucket. I want you all to flood now the owls. I want you to flood this altar with seed. And I want you guys to come lay it in my hands. God, I thank you. Come on, say you. Bless you, girl. You still living off of the words that's been released over your life. And God says there's more. There's more he's going to give to you. You've proven worthy. You've proven to be worthy of it. So greater is coming to you and your business. Say of the Lord. You got to hire more people because your business is getting ready to expand. Come on. Oh, the blessings. I see this seed. Glory to God. The blessings of the Lord rest upon you and your house. What do you do? I was going to say that. You're a hairstylist. You do celebrity hair yet? You're getting ready to start. This seed right here, the Lord told you to get that amount. He's getting ready to, did you hear me today when I said he's getting ready to change your clientele? It's, he's getting ready to upgrade you and the people are now going to pay for, for, for what you're worth. He is getting ready to give you influencers that will come to you to get their hair done. And money is not going to be an option. You're, you're, you're supposed to be a stylist to the stars. And God is getting ready to cause one person to come that's going to open the door for many. So don't stop posting. Don't stop advertising. Because the right person is getting ready to see your work. And they're getting ready to walk to you and ask you to style their hair. And when you do it, they're going to give the word to other women. And I even see, I don't know, I see men too, that they're going to be coming to y'all's business to get refreshed and to get styled and to get their hair cuts and to get their hair done. And you will be known as a celebrity stylist. And then you will be sent out to travel and do hair and to get wardrobe. Because not just hair, I see wardrobe styling. It's not just it's not just hair but I see makeup there's a whole whole art, uh, enterprise that God is getting ready to give to you and this seed has just unlocked it it is done say it for Lord can we oh I hate that y'all that y'all always stop the music Thank you. you made all things new yeah you made all things new God, I thank you for him. Bless him. Continue, God, to use his mind to be a problem solver. I don't know what you do, but you solve problems, boy. Your brain is, you like a, are you a doctor? I thank you, God, for his mind and what you've given to him to help people. The Father says you're a problem solver, and you being a problem solver is going to release great wealth into your hands. Blessings rest on you. Thanks for reading that scripture for me. The blessings of the Lord rest on you in Jesus' name, mother. Come on, y'all. Ray, the blessings of the Lord rest. Y'all, this was one of my babies that I pastored. Do they know your story? You don't want me to tell it? I can tell it. 
Let me tell y'all something. When I first started pastoring in Portsmouth, Virginia, I pastored Ray, baptized her. She surrendered and submitted her life to God. Ray got saved and brought everybody she could to the church. Ray was a stripper. And Ray would start to bring, when she said yes to God, she would bring the men. The men that she used to deal with, she would invite them to church and they would come and get saved. Do you all hear what I'm saying? And while she was there in Norfolk, I would speak over her life and tell her, things are going to line up for you, for your family, for your business. And then she told me, when I moved away, she told me, she said, I'm moving to Florida. Do you have a church for me to go to? I said, what part of Florida? She said, Tampa. I said, I know exactly where you could go. My brother and sister uh, live in Tampa. You go and visit. The first day she visited, she said, I joined. And since she's been in this ministry, this girl's life has taken a turn. She has her son. She's living for the Lord. She's working. She's coaching, cheerleading. And God has done something so new. And for me to see it, it has made my heart so glad. This is a good place, y'all. It's a safe place. It's the place where you can grow and be made new in Jesus' name. Do you believe that? Come on and I will follow you forward. Oh, 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 you. you. Blessings yeah. rest on you. Bless you, baby. Bless you, sis. In Jesus' name. Bless you. I love you. Bless you, pastor. Bless you. The blessings of the Lord rest on y'all. Bless on you. Rest on you. The blessings. Blessings rest on you, woman of God. Blessings rest on you, Joby Mama. Blessings, mother. The blessings of the Lord rest on you. Bless you, baby. Thank you. The blessings of the Lord rest. Come on, the blessings of the Lord rest. Bless you. Bless you, woman of God. Thank you. The blessings of the Lord. I love you. I love you, man of God. The blessings of the Lord rest on you. In Jesus' name. I know the Messiah. God, I thank you. I thank you for him. And I thank you, Father, for using him as the breaker of the curse in his family lineage. I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's African or Haitian. I don't know. But you're going to break the spirit of witchcraft off your family line. And you will declare the word of the Lord with power and with authority. For the word of the Lord is in your mouth, saith the Lord. I thank you, God, for strengthening him for this assignment that he will take on boldly in Jesus' name. Hey, oh, 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 you. Bless you, baby. Bless it, rest on you. Bless you, man. I love you. Oh, 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 Your hair match your dress. Go ahead. Bless your family. Bless y'all. Bless you. I love you. Bless you. Bless you. Love you. You pretty. The blessings of the Lord rest on you in Jesus' name. You're beautiful. I love you. Blessings rest on you, girl. Bless you. Come on. Bless you. Blessings of the Lord rest on you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Ma'am. Ma'am. You go here. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's a pastoral mandate on you. There, you're from St. P. You follow me. Where do you go to church? Gateway Christian. Glory to God. God, I thank you for this woman of God. I bless you for her. And I thank you, Father, for who you've called her to be. I see you being a voice to your community. I don't know if Hispanic or Latinos, but I see that you will win many to the Lord. You will win many to Jesus Christ. And I pray even now a double portion of favor, wisdom, and strength to go back to your home, to go back to your job, to go back where you serve. And I speak an increase. And God, let revival break out. Let revival break out wherever she goes. In Jesus' name, a fresh wind be released unto her now. Amen and amen. You make all things new. Blessings 
feel the Lord rest. The blessings rest on you. Love you. When you get that magazine or whatever you do, make sure you call me. All right? I want to be a part of it. You somebody. You somebody. You are somebody major. And the world going to recognize who you are. This is the season where they're going to give you your flowers while you're still here. Come on. Thank God for her. Come on. Bless you, mama. I love you. This is, this is my almond bearer, my cousin Shantae's mom that lives here. So y'all welcome her. She lives in Ocala, Ocala. So she drove from Ocala to be here. But she ain't got no church home. Y'all tell the driver, how far is it? Oh, God. Oh, God. Maybe you can pick two Sundays a month or something. Talk to the pastor. They're going to work something out with you. You need to be here. All right? All right. We love you. Forward. Bless you, girl. Bless y'all. I love y'all. rest on you in Jesus name I love you you're so welcome I love you and blessings to your house in Jesus name I love you bless you fly girl you just too much for me honey I bless you what you do come on here come on here what you do you look like an administrator darling you look like you run things God I thank you for the spirit of grace and administration that rests on her and I thank you, Father, for even doing what she desires personally. God, I thank you for giving her what she wants personally. She wants a husband. She wants a husband. That's her prayer. I want you to honor her. God, send her the right one. The one that would not be threatened by who she is. But I thank you for the man that qualifies to cover her. I thank you, Father, for allowing him to find her and to find her this year. She has been prepared and she is ready. So I declare that you will be found this year. This is the year, baby. Start getting ready because you're going to meet him and you will know exactly who he is. Keep being fly. Keep going to work dressed to the nines. Keep your heels on because he's watching you already. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. Oh, I already got you. All oh, things. That's your sister. Well, your sister about to have her a boo. A boo. A boo is coming. In Jesus' name. Bless you, girl. I love you. Blessings rest on y'all. Bless y'all. Bless y'all. Love you guys. Continue to stay right there with them and keep them covered. What's on them, so how God blesses them, it's going to fall on y'all. Y'all love them for real. And God sees it. Hallelujah. Bless you. And look at this chocolate drop. Ooh, let me see her.
They tried to diagnose my daughter with Down syndrome. This is my spiritual mom. So we were, we were believing, and she had open heart surgery last year. So this has been a whole walk of faith. The Lord has restored her heart unto new has restored the pulmonary hypertension upon her. It's no longer, and then now she has thyroid. Now I'm just trying to say, and adenoids, her adenoids. But we cancel every assignment of the enemy upon you. Spoke a word and you said prophesy, and I prophesy over her that she shall live and declare the works of the Lord. And every word curse, we send it back to the pits of hell in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! That if you agree, open up your mouth and give up glory! I said if you agree, if you agree, this is how we going home. We are going to agree that it's already done! Now wait, 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 something wrong. Some wrong. I said we are getting ready to rejoice for what the Father has already did. We are in agreement with what the Lord has spoken. And when one shout, we all shout. When one dance, we all dance. Pick them up. Praise the mama. Only for those that have received of the Lord. I need you to testify to a few people and tell them I can't give you all the details. But I need you to know that what God just did in my you ain't talking. Come on, what God just did in my life is not by might, 
nor is it by power, but it's by the Spirit of God. Look at somebody and say, could nobody do that but God? If you believe it, lift your voice and open your mouth and give him glory right now. Go, one, two, three, go, go, go. I said give him glory, release it and give it to him now. be the glory I said to God be the glory for the things that he has done one more thing find one more person I'm going to give you scripture and say this with me say ye to the righteous all shall be well come on find somebody and agree with them and say say ye to the righteous I didn't say perfect I said righteous that all shall be well. All shall be well. All shall be. To God be the glory. I said to God be the glory. No, no. To Bashandaya. To God be the glory. For the things that he has done. I don't know about you, but what we have experienced in this house today has changed the trajectory of our future. Look at somebody and say, I'm forever changed. Can we honor the Lord for Pastor Siobhan Smith? I know that she's exited the room, but I need y'all to make some real noise. Come on, Jordan. Make some real noise for this vessel of God. Wow. 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 Come on up, wife. While we're honoring the Lord for her, can you help me celebrate my beautiful wife and this conference host? Lady Latoya D. Jones. That ain't the right kind of noise. I said that ain't the right kind of noise. I need you all to make some real noise for my wife. Wow, 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 wow. I don't know what else to say. You all have no idea the amount of work that she's put in behind the scenes, the times when she desired to just not do it anymore, and by right, she could have said, you know what, we're not going to do it. So here's a retrospect. It's been years since she's done a women's conference. Eight, y'all ain't hearing me, eight years. And she contemplated tears to whether or not she was going to do it. Thought about doing it last year, and she was like, no. Dates changed, but I'm grateful to God that he brought all, not just the women, but he brought all of us here in this eighth year that symbolizes new beginning.
God just dropped something in my spirit. And he said, you need to praise me because I waited. Lift your voice and say, I'm so glad God waited. He waited eight whole years. To bring this together full circle, I want her to know that I'm extremely proud of the work and the labor that she has done. And again, this is eight years. Eight years. Wow. By far. I can't speak for her, but I can speak for me because I've been to all of them. This is by far the most, whatever word you want to put there, super fragile, casualistic, expialidocious, that one, and all of the proper, yeah, that, amazing. I'm going to yield the floor to her at this time. I know she has her thank yous, but I want to thank you all for how you've worked, labored, served, for the nights that you've given to planning. Thank you for those of you that invited family, friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to give the floor to her, and um, she's going to, she says, stay here with us. Oh, okay. One more time. Can we thank God for my wife? I wish I had the words to describe what I'm feeling right now. Um, it's been eight years since we've done a conference and I'd been, I thought about doing it again. It's like, no, you know, it's just so much, so much. And when I finally built up the nerve because God blessed me with an amazing team of women, I'm like, okay, let's try it. We had it all planned, scheduled to happen in September and then Hurricane Ivan came. And it's like, God, what are you trying to tell me? Like, you know, we got to right to the week of the conference and had to shift. But if you would have told me then what God was going to do now, I just, I, when I say God has blown my mind on so many different levels, um, I believe I said it Friday night, but you know that God is in it when he gives you the vision and he gives you the people that can bring your vision to life and not just bring it to life, but bring it to life in a way that blows your mind. I mean, I know what I had in mind. I wish I could bring out the little letters that I had in mind to make, but God saw fit to bless, you know, Sister Micheline, y'all. She's responsible for the decor. Um, stand up, Sister Mitch. What Prophetess Smith was saying to her, I promise you guys just don't know. She is such a jewel. I, you know, told them what I had in mind. I showed them these little letters that I had made. I had glitter all over the house. Pastor was kind of aggravated because he kind of OCD. But I'm like, you know, I just know I want the word, empower her to, to be on the stage. And she was like, well, what if we got it in big letters? I'm like, sure. I had no idea that the letters would be big as me and that it would have the impact that it has. And then when we were here decorating, um, Dr. Jamika was like her, you know, healed, empowered, and restored. I'm like, that's our mantra for the weekend. I am her. I am healed. I am empowered. And I am restored. And I'm grateful to God for all that he's done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's something about the power of God. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. As much as y'all needed this conference, God knew just what I needed. And I thank God for healing. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so grateful. Oh. I got a list of names. I want to try to call everybody, but I just can't. So if you are a part of the team, if you helped out in any way, God, I thank you. If you could just... Oh.
I thank you to um, the women's team, Sister Karen, um, Sister Shanae, Sister Benita, uh, Sister Trina, Sister Susan, uh, I think that's it, Sister Sandy. We, we started planning last year, and I'm grateful to you all for all that you've done, Sister Mitch for the letter, Sister T for praise and worship. Jeremy West came out Thursday to help us set up. Trey and Matthew were here. Matthew fell asleep on the back because we were here until midnight trying to make sure that it was a wow moment. Um, to all of the speakers, um, Prophetess Nikki, she blessed us during intercession yesterday. Pastor Barbara Walker, thank you so much for your prayer. And God, keep the calories away in Jesus' name. God, I mean, it's, it's so many people. For those of my family that traveled near and far, Sister Kiona, thank you. You're one of the silent angels, and I'm so grateful for you. Um, Sister Dana, Sister Angie, they have done so much. Silent angels, so thankful for them. Um, and to my husband. I love you so much, and I know you are probably glad that we are at this point because I probably, I know I was waking up while I got stuff about the conference, going to sleep. We would talk on lunch breaks, and I'm like, but I got a question about the conference, but what do you think about this? So I know you have endured so much, but I'm so thankful for you because you didn't let me stop. You kept your hand in my back. You gave me words of encouragement. You've shown me love. You supported me. You came straight from work to make sure that we could pull all of this off. And I, I thank you. I love you. And I want you to know that I got your back. And whatever you need, baby, I got you. I love you. I love you. Um, um, I have a special gift for Sister Micheline. Um, because you you did so much um, with coordinating the letters, and I won't talk too much about Thursday night, Dr. Jamika. We were trying to put the step and repeat banner pose, and I think it was about 13 of us trying to figure it out, and it took a couple hours for us to get it, but we did it. But Mitch, I mean, the, the decor, I mean, it, it's, it's amazing, so... I thank you. You were also one of the panelists on Friday night. Y'all, she did such an amazing job. She talked to us about rebound, repositioning, and recovering and shared her story. And you see people and you see where they are, but you just don't know what they went through. And she talked to us about childhood trauma and things that she went through and how she's overcome. And we know that this year was going to be a big year for her, Impact 2023. It's going to be an impulse 2023. It's going to be amazing. So we thank you so much. And again, to everybody that played a part, thank you. I love you. And if you're like me, I'm excited about what's to come. Who's ready for Empower Her 2024? It's time to start planning, time to get to work. God bless you. Just before my wife leaves, I think a few people, some of those silent angels, have something that they want to do specific for her. So I'm going to yield the floor to them at this time. Minister Trina, Sister Susan, Sister Dana, and my oldest sister, for those of you all that don't know, this is my oldest sister, Sister Angela Jones Malcolm. I don't know who's going to get the mic, but it won't be me. It's an honor. You are our gift. We were so glad that the Lord sent Pastor Smith to impart that word into you. I already see a change. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And we as the women of God, not only us here at Life Point, but women all over the world, ones that are live streaming now, 
we were all waiting for you. We were waiting for you. And we were waiting for you to allow the spirit of the Lord to do just what he did. And for that, we are grateful. Thank you. It is not so much what's in the box. And I had to talk to Pastor off the mic because I have some other things that I would like to see us do. Amen. But just know from all of the women of God that we appreciate you allowing God to use you for such a time as this. This is not the ending. This is only the beginning. And we just want to say thank you. Can you clap your hands and celebrate our first time? Thank you, Pastor. And we have your back, First Lady. <laughs> time. Can we honor the Lord for my wife? I want to invite you all to meet us back here. Meet us back here Sunday, Sunday at 9 o'clock. Sunday at 9 o'clock. We are here. Worship kicks off. I want to um, appreciate you for the power of your presence. For those of you that are viewed online, thank you. Can we make some hand claps for those that are still, if there are anybody left online? Amen. I'm sure after a service like that, they probably did like this. They probably fell out in their house. All at the job, just trying to get it together before the boss comes in. But seriously, I thank God for uh, the power of your presence. Really quick, just a quick observation. The Youth and Young Adult Ministry will host, will host excuse me, their first outing of the year at the alley on Saturday, this coming Saturday at uh, 7 p.m. in Riverview. If your child is 18 or younger, their bowling fee will be covered. If any child would like a sponsor to be sponsored, uh, please see Sister Courtney, Sister Courtney or Sister Passion. They're here in the front row. Um, but I want to make sure um, that our young people understand that there is movement, there's activity. We're building, we're growing, amen. And so um, please see them with any further questions regarding that. I wanna make sure that I get that out of the way. Um, Again, thank you so much. If this is your first time visiting with us, um, just lift your hand right where you are. Amen. First time visiting. Amen. Can we honor the Lord? Thank you all so much. I see Diane back there. Diane, lift the microphone up. I love it. I love it. Miss Green, is that her back there? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, any other first time visitors, if this is your first time, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where is... Where's mom? Where where'd she go? She went back to the back, probably went back to the back there with, with the others. But nonetheless, um, the time is indeed well invested, not far spent, but well invested mm -hmm. because this has been a move of God. At this time, let's all stand. I want to take a moment to appreciate um, the remaining uh, persons of the band. I know that several of them have other obligations, but thank God for those that are still here. If there's anyone that desires to be a partner of this church, you want to make this church your church to call home. Maybe you're in between places to trying to figure it out. But I want to just at this moment, I was actually just prompted uh, by my baby sister, amen, to open the doors of the church. So if there's anybody that desires to become a partner, just lift your hand right where you are. Lift your hand right where you are. If you want to make this your place to call home today, just lift your hand right where you are. Amen. Wes is... Oh, you know, he gets me like this. Can we honor the Lord for Minister Wesley Walker? We're, we're making it officially official again. He's coming back home. Um, this, is my, this is my guy. This is my dude. But um, <laughs> we're not going to do this today. We have to make it official official. Amen. But I'm grateful that you're back. 
Grateful that you're back. Grateful that you're back. And I love you, man. I love you. Um, again, I believe that is it. Uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you and we praise you. Thank you for the power of your presence that has met us here. I ask in the name of Jesus that as we leave this place but never your presence, that you would sanction your ministering angels around about us. Thank you because you love us just the way we are and you extend your grace and your mercy. I pray the blessings of the Lord that maketh one rich and addeth no sorrow be our portion. Thank you for healing because healing is the children's bread. I rebuke the enemy from every affair of our life. I speak to every element of our life and I evict the enemy from the premises of your mind. I speak peace to your minds, peace to your body, peace to your home, peace to your business, peace to your future in the name of Jesus. Satan, just in case you're eavesdropping on this conversation, we remind you that we are the children of the most high God. And if God be for us, no matter what you do or who you sin, no one can be against us. And we stand in agreement that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And every tongue that rises against us, you will condemn. For this we thank you and we praise you in advance for all things. In Jesus' name, somebody seal it by saying thank God and amen. Love on a few people that, are you, that you're safe and comfortable with. And tell them I'm so glad you came. I hope to see you again real soon. God bless you. Consider yourselves dismissed as our prayer.